Hello, welcome to Cartoonist by Night. I'm Anthony Latched. I'm joined here by Tunes by Troy. Troy Dungara, how's it going, buddy? Good. How are you doing, Anthony? I'm thinking back, and I'm going to leave this in, but I may have mispronounced my last name wrong. It sounded weird when I was like saying it, um, so I guess we'll find out later. But uh, welcome. That's really weird, dude, because you said my name perfectly. <laughs> It, it's one of those that like if i was doing the uh, crimson cobble comic club i'd just be like all right yep back up edit i'm gonna start over but we're gonna see how that turned out okay <laughs> all right so cartoonist by night fans who are watching this uh, youtube video are finding out that there's only two of us here because we have a format for this show we plan to do like one giant themed episode per month we have a couple of those banked at this moment and whenever we get two or three people out of the group, we have uh, certain names for those shows. We have a three for all when we have three people in. And uh, we have a tentatively titled Dynamic Tuo. I don't know if anybody digs that or not, but we'll we'll see what it what it's called when I edit this. I like it. I like it, Anthony. I think it's good. Dynamic Tuo. So welcome to what will be the first Dynamic Tuo. Uh, myself and Troy just hanging out. It'll be a little less organized. And basically the purpose of these kind of episodes is us just going in, drawing whatever we want, talking about whatever we want. And it's going to be good practice for me to kind of keep concentrating on what I'm drawing so I don't have to worry about answering fan mail and making sure everything's running in the background and all the technical stuff that... Uh, you know, people don't see on the when they sit back and enjoy with a swig to cartoonists by night. So we are just going to jump of coffee, a yeah. swig of coffee from a giant coffee mug. Man, where'd you get that fancy mug? I don't know some website. You know what though? It's actually not as giant as it looks. It looks like a big coffee mug, but it's um, it's just tall. Just tall. It's not as like wide. Because I have a, a Snoopy mug that looks like a regular sized mug, and it sit it fits the exact same amount of coffee. And I usually have a bunch of coffee mugs that just end up being um, just props and just displays. I never drink coffee, and I just have like a cool Howard the Duck mug and a a Modoc mug, and so I have a mug collection, but I never use any of them. So that makes me so sad. Maybe I'll start using them just for you when, when we have dynamic two O's. So. All right. That, that would that would mean now, a lot to me. <laughs> I, I know what I'm gonna draw, but uh Troy, we gotta ask you here, uh, do you know what you are gonna draw for hanging out? No. In fact, I'm I you see me keep on glancing over to the other side. That's where I have my bookshelf trying to find some idea. You're looking around. Um, I yeah. only I did that so I, can, that I did that so I can buy some time to turn off my video and reach for some show and tell because I'm going to explain what I'm drawing and then hopefully you'll have an answer uh, as we get rolling here. So I wanted to test out some uh, original sketch cards. I have I've really uh, enjoyed picking those up from artists at conventions over the last uh, handful of years. And uh, my friend uh, gifted me a blank pack of them and said, here, you want to use them? I'm like, yeah, I'll give them a shot. And the week that this was being recorded is I decided to uh, make it a theme for the Muppets because the Muppets had a new show on Disney Plus, uh, the Muppets Mayhem. And uh, so I did my first, I don't do much physical drawing. So I'm like, this will be a good, like small commitment. So I came up with this uh, Dr. Teeth here. So I did this in pencil and Sharpie and colored pencils. And uh but I started it digitally just to kind of get my layout of how I was going to draw it. And I figured, well, now since I have these uh, pencils, digital pencils, I'm going to go ahead and do my comfortable drawing digitally and kind of finish this out. So that is what I'm going to work on. The texture of that paper looks really rough. Yeah, so the ones, I don't have the... Uh, what it's called i just bought some off of amazon some uh the bristol uh brand but i bought a smooth one but yeah okay. this one this one here is i just have to uh get my screen back up but yeah it is a little rough you know you can see some of the white coming through it just depends on how 
hard i smashed it with the color pencils there but but yeah these were ones that were just gifted to me and i figured i'd just give them a shot and see what's going on but yeah i purchased some new ones here some fresh ones and i think those are going to be the the ones i'm going to go forward with did you enjoy drawing that tiny it it was uh i did what uh, you questioned uh i called it franco style and uh-huh. uh, because I was just holding my breath the whole time as I was inking and trying not to screw up a line and I'm just working so small. It was uh-huh. very, it was very new to me, but uh, ultimately I liked the small commitment to not to have a giant canvas and be like, Oh, I got to draw like, you know, yeah. all this extra, you know, detail and stuff. So I did like the, because I did a second one, which I'll show here too. This is a, dynamic too so why not there's no rules i did the janice uh sketch card as well so janice from the uh electric mayhem and uh Uh but yeah so i really dug that too and that one i had more finer details when it came to like guitar strings and hair and stuff and yeah i Mm -hmm. I found it pretty fun i have a small I i wouldn't call it a collection but i have those uh those plastic bcw comic book boxes sure and they have like a little thing on there where you can put the um put like a card something the size of a card in there as like a i guess your label or whatever yeah and so i got christy russo sketch cards oh i think this is the the first one i got from him awesome and i got uh see here's sleepwalker beautiful i i don't have a tremendous amount um most of my collection that's left over is years back my my little boy needed some some medical bills paid so we had uh, um i sold off most of my collection but i kept and then continued to search out spider-man stuff so most of my g russo cards are various spider-man things because that's just what's what I have the most of. So I just had a, a theme going on there almost by accident. Yeah. Yeah. But um he's so good. I don't know how he does and he uses brushes and then he gets things super, super tiny. Yeah, I I've seen uh Katie Cook uh I have an original super tiny watercolor like the of uh of uh, My Little Pony and Rainbow Dash, and I had that uh, right from her table years mm-hmm. ago. But, uh, and it's so tiny. Like, the card itself is small, and the drawing's even smaller, but it's just like, you know, maybe a size of a Mighty Max figure, you know, the little right <laughs> pocket type of thing. And, yeah, it's it's amazing kind of watching that stuff. So I am, uh, I cannot change... Oh, no. Yes, I can. I got it. I got it. It just moved. It moved on me when the, the camera proportions changed. Uh, to get to your drawing board or your... Yeah. I was looking in a specific spot. and So, yeah. So in... as, no, people, as people are listening here, they'll see that... Uh, I'll have my share screen up for a while as I'm still trying to figure out how to uh, make that my main screen while still keeping the recording going and not uh, making anything uh, conflicting with any important stuff. But then as I watch and I see kind of Troy go through, I'll just kind of jump in and out of mine and and uh, we can focus on his stuff too as we see the magic happen. I'm just... I guess just drawing a girl. So when you're doing this here, do you have any idea where it's going to go? You're just start with this and then wing it? Or... Uh, well, well, right now I have an idea where the pose is going to go, but as far as who it's going to be, not yet. So what's going to be really fun about this episode, this will most likely be the second episode on the YouTube feed for uh, Cartoonist by Night. But just to give a little peek behind the curtain for all those uh, fans out there, is that we've recorded a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles themed episode that will come out at the end of May. 
we've recorded an Archie Comics uh, themed episode that will either come out at the end of June or July. And uh, there might even be some bonus dynamic two O's and uh, three for alls happening in between there. So uh, it'll, it'll be interesting that, you know, the, the order of some of this stuff. So hopefully our continuity, uh, you know, checks out. And... Mm -hmm. Well, if it doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> the one thing I'll say is that uh, what I revealed in the Archie episode, we won't talk about in this episode. That's all we need to do. So. My big I don't one. remember what you revealed in the Archie episode. Well, um, I'm going to pretend like you're you're saying that just to go along with the fact of keeping that a secret. But you know, we're talking about a uh, a book before we hit record. We're not going to talk about any of that stuff of the stories that were in that book. So there's nothing I can do to goad you into into no. talking about it. Is I don't know. Nope, I have no idea what you're even talking about. All right then. <laughs> so yeah, uh dynamic two O's just hanging out, drawn, and uh basically just being very there might be a lot more moments of just silence as we're both kind of doing our thing. And we always encourage people to uh to draw along. Yes. We've had a couple of people do that and uh some of that stuff will be featured in the in the episodes. Can we do a shout out to somebody that has drawn along? Uh, yeah, yeah. D Brad. Um all yeah comic super fan D Brad has been drawing along and has been posting some really really killer stuff agreed yeah you showed me a joker and i was just like i want to retire and only look at his art from now on <laughs> he did he's doing really good now when i did this pencil sketch here like I figure, all right, Muppets, new Muppet show. I'm a big Muppet fan for uh, forever. And mm -hmm. uh, it's focusing on Dr. Teeth and Electric Mayhem. So I'm like, all right, sketch cards. Maybe I'll do a whole page and it'll just be the Electric uh, Mayhem band members starting off mm -hmm. with Dr. Teeth. And when I drew it, um, I'm zooming in here. My pencils and what I did on the sketch card is I gave it, I just kind of did a different kind of beard just to, just to try to do something different with it, kind of take some artistic um uh another word i'm trying to think of but i wanted to license. just what's that artistic license yeah let's go with that word because i didn't have any words um and just kind of do like oh well this is how i'm going to draw his beard or something but now that i'm doing it digitally where i'm more comfortable uh drawing and have progressed a lot more now mm -hmm. we see here i'm just kind of kind of go with this beard instead of the uh the jagged teeth looking curl would end up being kind of like a curly beard. Okay. Going with more of a fluffy beard, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. And if you look at the pencils too, until I started watching the, the new uh, Muppets Mayhem show, I started mm -hmm. realizing I was looking at limited source for uh, drawing Dr. Teeth. And I didn't notice that he had like sunglasses on. So I fixed it on the trading card but in the digital you'll see that you know there's definitely no sunglasses going on so i'm going to go in and kind of uh do some uh do some uh improv here and eventually give him sunglasses i have a yep, i got a i got a comic that just got announced through keen spot called jungle drama yes i decided to draw the main main character from jungle drama say a jungle girl named chama and uh so that's that's what i'm drawing it's just a random 
stereotypical, which she's supposed to be stereotypical, nothing super crazy about her. I love but, seeing uh, that, you know, just kind of starting with your, uh, you know, just the random figure drawing. You said drawing a girl, and now you just decided, I'm just going to draw this girl. Yep. Now, I don't know how I'm going to ink it. I'm not the artist on this one. A guy named Eric Marshall, who is really, really good, particularly with this. I uh, hate to keep harping on Archie stuff, but that really was the inspiration for for this one. Was sort of like a, a Archie or Betty and Veronica meets um, Tarzan or Love and Rockets, that sort of thing. So his artwork is perfect for that. Um, I have not really drawn the characters much beyond the initial um, like concept drawings, which I did digitally. So I'm going to try to use a, a brush pen. It's funny, I use brush pens a lot on this, and it's the tool that I'm the least comfortable with is a brush pen. Maybe I should stop doing that. <laughs> Well, maybe that's what these episodes are for and this whole show as an existence, just kind of, you know, you, you see the real-time decisions and uh, we'll see uh, what comes from it. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna pause for a second. And that's going to be a good time for me to go into share screen. Okay, cool. I am going to grab a old-fashioned fountain pen because I love playing with those. And cool, cool. that's what I'm going to do. Punk. All right. While Troy is gone, this is the part of the show where I talk about how awesome I think Troy is. And he's a, he's a real swell of a guy. Stuff that I would never say to him in person. I don't even know if he's still in the same room. Uh, so maybe he can hear this, but I'm going to pretend like I didn't say any of this stuff. But boy, that Troy. And the tunes that are by him. Tunes with a Z. Amazing stuff. All right, for people watching along to my share screen here, I did some improv and added some sort of sunglasses. We're going to see what it looks like when I start coloring it. I know he's got some like purple shades going on there. So I drew some lines through the eyeballs that I'll eventually color uh, this part here purple. And. Uh, We'll see how that looks. But uh, I didn't have any Dr. Teeth reference uh, pulled up here, but I'm going to do it on the old phone here. And uh, just to kind of see what his, his hair is looking like these days. Since I did something a little different on my sketch card, I kind of, now that I'm drawing digitally, which is my more comfortable state, I'm just kind of, Need to take a good look at him before I, uh, okay, nice, nice kind of a frizzy, but I'm going to go just kind of like I did with the, uh, the bushy beard. I'm going to see what happens here. I'm back. You're just seeing me some make some real time hair decisions here, and I I think I I think I like it. Cool, good deal. Now the one thing I forgot to do here is I'm going to tone down my uh, my blue pencils here, so I can. Uh... There we go. Look at this guy right here. Here we go. This is what I ink so far. Let's bring. Yeah, it <laughs> Well, all right. Cool. I am living dangerously here. I got my big old bottle of Speedball Super Black ink. Oh, no, you're not going to be able to see. There we, there we go. go. Now, when it comes to all the stuff that you're talking with, when anybody talks about pencils and inks and markers and 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 
anything artistic. Uh, I had, uh, let me, uh, hold on here. I want to just make sure I'm saying the name correctly here. Um, Chris O'Connell, uh, just wanted to make sure I had the, the O in there. Uh, Chris O'Connell, I've attended a couple of the Oh Yeah events within uh, beautiful downtown Skokie, um, local to Chicago, and uh, he's been very uh, complimentary of my sketch cards and and the Guji print and all that kind of stuff. And he had asked me uh, what I what I used, and he he suggests he's like, did you use so and so and so and so? And I'm just like. I used the pencil and then I, I used a, like a thin Sharpie and then I used colored pencils. That's the best I could describe it. So. Mm. I didn't, I don't know numbers and brands and maybe someday I will, but. What is this? I, ah. Sorry. I just go ahead. I, I was going to say I had a similar thing when I'm used to make some short films and, uh, people would ask me certain things. I'm like, oh, I bought a camera and hit the red button and record and I just do it. I don't know any technical terms. I can't even tell you the brand of the camera, but that's just how I roll sometimes. I got two different types of ink. Before I start inking with a drawing, I'm just gonna, or two different pens. I'm just gonna see do how they do because Ooh, this is nice. And in the post, when I go through and edit these videos, it's mostly me just uh, going through and I can like enlarge your screen for the audience and stuff so they hear my audio talking. And that way we can really concentrate mm -hmm. on some of the stuff that you're doing there. And... All right, cool. I'm just going to put some light on it so I can see the glare. And get sort of an idea of how quickly it dries. So this one. So let's see. I'm afraid it's not going to focus well. But the fountain pen, it's got a well inside of it. And then um, the pen shape is kind of like that. So. Let's see, actually, I think the light is harming the ability to see. Yeah. So the pen shape is kind of like this. And if you don't have uh, much pressure on it, you just get that little thin, thin line. Mm -hmm. But if you press down, these two tines separate and give you a thicker line. Okay. So you have so light, and then you press down, you get thick, light, thick. So it's good for variations. This is a Pilot SF. Um, I have no idea when I got it. I, I really like fountain pens, and whenever I see them for a good price, I typically will just buy it because I I like the, the uh, feel of them. No. And then, see, this is the... Uh, you remember seeing like old TV shows and there's like the nerd that had the pocket protector? Oh, sure. And people, people of our generation are like, why? <laughs> pens don't leak like that. Well, once upon a time, pens did leak like that. So this is one of those types of pens. And this is a Fude pen. And uh, I'm not sure if I can get the ink to flow or not. It may need to be cleaned. I, I might be out of luck with this one. Now, you said SF. Now, in my day job, that SF means sugar-free. What does FF mean in this sense? Ooh, I'm going to guess soft, fine, but I really don't know. Okay. Could look it up. Um, in fact... I'm going to post this pen and kind of let it sit, and I will look it up. And while you do that, I'm going to jump back to my screen because I'm drawing some arms over here as Dr. Teeth is getting some arms. Once I made that um, 
made my blue pencils lighter, I uh, was still stuck on that layer. So I drew some arms and then I realized like, oh crap, I was on the wrong layer. So I just had to back up a little bit. But yeah, the point of these episodes for me is uh, not only to hang out with uh, one of my fellow uh, Cartoonist by Night friends, but what I need to learn after these themed episodes that we recorded, what I found out that I need to learn more of is it's okay to keep my head down and talk, and I don't always have to make sure I'm performing, if you will, because I would realize by the end of the episodes... I didn't get nearly as much done as I would have hoped to do. And I would do it all in post and touch it up and stuff. So this one, I want to just really keep in mind that I can, uh, I can talk and draw at the same time. Right on. It does mean soft, fine. So not Is that sure. what I said? I, I said sugar free. That's all I know. So, okay. That wasn't sugar free then. No, not sugar free. The ink is finally working its way down on the food day pen. So um, I said I get them whenever I can find them affordably. That is not an affordable pen. And I, I just saw the price on it. I'm wondering, like, is is it possible that I actually paid that much for? <laughs> but, but but I'm cheap. I don't do that. Hmm. Were you sleepwalking, sleep buying? I don't know. This is nice. The Fude pen. I remember these pens are um, Amazon makes them. Let me see if I, it's, uh, or sells them. Hong Dion. H-O-N-G-D-I-A-N. Hmm. Forest forest series hong dian forest series and they're like between 12 and 14 dollars 15 dollars something like that on amazon and they're really nice pens except that i don't treat them well and i don't use them frequently enough to keep globs of dry ink from interfering with the line When I'm drawing Dr. Teeth here, I kind of keep trying to remind myself that I'm drawing a uh, a Muppet. So like mm -hmm. when I was drawing like the, the fingers, I realized when I'm inking them being like, oh, I, I got to make them a little more uh, puffier, you know, and make it a little more Muppety. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just kind of funny where. Look at that taper. Oh, look at that. You got your taper going. And I just, I, I, I don't know, it's all just feels very natural for me so it, Lucky. It, it feels awesome to be called out and to, to have that uh noticed to me it's all i know you're a natural i tell you a natural <laughs> all natural i'm not sure because of the wetness of this that i'll be able to finish it but I'm going to start with the this pilot that was apparently crazy expensive. On our uh, chat thread, one night Rogers and I, I don't know why Rogers stays up so late, but we were chatting and the topic similar to like what um would come up on a crimson cal interview came up and it was uh, if you were given the reins at a particular publisher what would you do what would you do and uh so i'm going to pose that question to you Anthony, because you were definitely asleep yeah yeah i'm trying to think yeah. back what those answers were so if i was given rain at a publisher what would i do not what would rogers do 
Yeah, what would I do? Well, first of all, what publisher would you like to be given reigns at? So if I'm thinking of the big two, if I had the choice between Marvel, DC, I'd definitely go towards Marvel. I prefer Marvel reading. I still read a lot of DC, but so mm -hmm. when I think about that. I'm trying to think if there's anything I would do differently at uh, with Marvel Publishing. Now, the one thing, you know, a lot of people will talk about, you know, crossovers and if there's too many, and I think they've definitely listened to it and there's less, there seems to be less of those things or it's just because I got to the point where I know enough that I don't need to follow everything that comes out. You know, if they do... Mm -hmm let's say um, Civil War two, and I get the main Civil War book, the main, you know, six or seven issues, whatever it is. I'll get a couple tie-ins if I'm already following that series. So if I'm following Captain America, you know, Sam Wilson, Captain America, I already get those issues anyways, but I'm not purposely going through that checklist and making sure, well, now I got to get, you know, these X-Men books that I'm not reading and I got to get this blade book i'm not reading this daredevil because it all has a tie-in i am mm -hmm. very easy to just be like well i'm just going to get the ones i want to read and i'm going to allow the the writers to uh to basically leave it up to them to uh to draw me in where i don't you know just to tell their story and um so there's not much i think i would do when it comes to like crossovers type of stuff because I am in the camp of just being like, well, just read what you want. Don't don't be a completist. Well, why? Let me ask you, why would you choose uh, Marvel? I would choose. Yeah, you really Marvel. wouldn't change much there. Well, yeah, and this is me just kind of thinking out if I even would choose Marvel. I guess if I chose Marvel, it would be because I know that universe better when it comes to Marvel and DC. Now, maybe uh, if I chose DC, I'd be like, all right, let's let's uh, let's correct this problem. Let's make these characters that I don't read more interesting. But I, I think it's just the fact that I know the Marvel Universe better. So I think that that would be the uh, why I would like the challenge, just because I would understand more of the things. And uh, mm -hmm. but, yeah, I, I'm just trying to think, though, what would I change? What would I actually change? Anything you would cancel? Ooh, let's see here. I've drawn myself in a corner with this wet yeah. ink here. I, I literally can't do anything without big freaking smudge. Mm. I'm listening to you though, but sorry. Yeah, I, I'm glad you did that because I'm still thinking. I Now, I'll, I'll say this. This is a, a little uh, inside uh baseball for anthony as a as a consumer when it comes to fiction and movies and television comics and things like that i like a lot of stuff um mm -hmm. i appreciate a lot of the effort that goes into making things that doesn't just automatically mean that i have to like it or anything but um i understand how uh how hard it is to to make things and how many different people has to go through so when it comes to like what would i cancel it's hard to say just because I'm not reading. I only read the stuff I like. Like if there's, let's, let's, let's put it this way. Um, let's look at Batman over at DC. If I'll read Batman, ongoing Batman, and they start getting into a story that I'm not really caring about, I just drop it. I'll just kind of keep checking in and watch the creative teams. And I see that there's a new numbering or, you know, new team coming up. And I'll be like, all right, I'll pick it up again. I won't care if I missed it for two years. And I'll just let the new creative team just kind of, you know, really just in. bring me back into it. So rather than me saying, well, Batman sucks, so let's cancel this book. I'm just like, yeah, I'm just going to stop subscribing right now. That doesn't mean that I want to, I think it should just end completely. So it's hard mm -hmm. to me to think of like what I would cancel. Oh. Is there something that existed once that you'd like to see brought back? Ooh, now we are talking. So they've done it. <laughs> they've, <Nice. done> <laughs> they've done it a couple times with uh, the Runaways. The original, like eighteen issues of the Runaways, um, is 
fantastic. And so it's Brian K. Vaughn, and I want to say Adrian Alfona, I believe. Okay. And while they continue to do other volumes of different creator changes and stuff of Runaways, I would continue to get them. I continue to like them. They weren't as good as those first eight, 18 issues, but that didn't you know make me stop buying it just because I love those characters. For those that don't know the Runaways, they are a group of characters who um, are the children of uh, supervillains. And these are all new characters to the Marvel Universe. They exist in the actual Marvel Universe, but um, they went ahead and just created all of these new villains and just rooted them into Marvel Comics history. And these were the kids that fi- found out that their parents were all uh, evil and they decided to uh, run away from them. And uh, it was just so fun. They, were, they had a lot of fun little personalities and such. So Runaways was gone for a uh, maybe 10 years or so. And then that Hulu show started happening. So then uh writer uh, Rainbow Rowell came in came in and uh kind of relaunched the runaways and had a pretty healthy run. I want to say it was like 35, maybe 40 some issues. And mm-hmm. but now that's been gone for a couple years and she's writing uh She Hulk, which is awesome because that's another one too. We haven't had a you know She Hulk book in a while. But what series I'm like, I, I want the runaways to to constantly be published like spider-man is like spider-man never goes away you know iron man never goes away captain america never goes away they they'll change dynamics of what's happening in the books and everything but there's always going to be those series so i I think the runaways deserve to just always be relevant how about that okay and uh how about you hmm um so i uh hmm. if it were marvel i would bring back a lot of their early formatting where they had um like what's it called uh tales to astonish there you go and uh, strange tales and things like that tales from suspense yeah, so where there's multiple characters inside of the same book. Um, but I th- I think the the main thing that I would do is I would change the uh, printing format. I would bring back the crappy paper. There you go. I would uh, find a way to open back up newsstand distribution, even if there's no longer newsstands, you know, practically. And you also, yeah, you would also bring back the newsstands. Yeah. Um, you know, even, even if it meant having to purchase back unused or unsold product, um, I would go ahead and I'd do that. Um, even if I had to buy like a paper mill in order to do it, this somebody told me, and I, I don't recall who it was, so I can't say if it's a reliable source or not, but that the um, newsstand paper or the, what is it? The newspaper type paper, newsprint, yeah. is now like a premium paper. So like, just boggles my mind that that would be the case but um you know like i said i can't recall who told me that so i I can't say whether it's reliable information but you know marvel slash disney is big enough they can buy a paper mill yeah you know they can make their own paper it you know once upon a time you know if it is now considered premium paper it's because it's not being purchased or not being produced um as as widely any longer um so i i don't i'm not sure that i really buy that it is but whatever if i needed to buy a paper mill to bring that back i would i'd limit the the coloring 
saturation, do whatever I could to cut printing costs while keeping the creators, um, the quality of the stories and everything like that. Um, so you'd have like, uh, you'd have the ability to pick up a, I'd like to say like a $2 comic, but I don't know if that's feasible in uh, today's market at all. Yeah. But let's say a 50 page $5 comic or something like that. And, uh, I don't know. So I, I would do that and then have, um, I'd have a lot of prestige format stuff. And this is an idea that Rogers had mentioned when we were talking about it in the thread, you know, have your, have your basic stuff out there produced cheaply so that the consumer can pick it up cheaply, but and also have your, um, your high quality prestige format stuff like the prestige format, meaning like the perfect bound, the thick paper, the high gloss paper and all that. Yeah. So, yeah, I liked your approach on, uh, you know, I kept thinking like stories and characters in this and I like your, uh, your approach to uh, the actual physicalness, you know, the, the presentation, the, the, the printing and all that. So, we were thinking on different wavelengths there, and I like it. I've been accused of thinking on different wavelengths before. <laughs> uh, earlier, people will see it um, that I did a share screen, and I'm designing the kind of like fringy vest of uh, Dr. Teeth, and I just kind of went all willy nilly, and I'm just oh. looking at it, being like, eh, I didn't really like that, so I went back and just got rid of all of it but it's one of those things that i'm not used to uh people seeing the uh the decisions being made and they're doing the same with you and and mm -hmm. all of us when we do the show but uh it was just kind of interesting where i'm like you know what i'll do the share screen now and then i end up doing things and i'm just like why am i doing any of this <laughs> why am i letting people see these mistakes well mistakes are important man mistakes are valuable The, uh, another thing that I would do is, um, as far as like characters and everything, Marvel Comics Presents would definitely be like a, a, what's it called? A featured book, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Sure. It would be something that would be, ah, there goes, see, I knew I was going to smudge that. That's all right. I've kind of, I said before that I worked myself into a corner, but now I'm like definitely in the corner. That's you in the corner. That's me in the corner. That's me in the spotlight. And when you said that, uh, future Anthony was going to then uh, blow up your video to full screen because you, you were going to be spotlighted. Losing my religion. So my smudge is going to be plants. Because Jungle Girl's got some plants nearby. I like that idea. I also like the idea of uh, doing like, uh, what was the name of the one where they reprinted Marvel Tales? But tales like stories tales yeah. where they reprinted all the old spider-man comics sure, yeah. i like the idea of doing that as a uh, digest and yeah. trying to sell that like in grocery store format as opposed to in the comic book shop as a as a new comic because collectors have really taken the market so much yeah that um I'm not sure in today's, in this day and age that it would sell because collectors would, you know, 
rally against something like that because it's all reprints. Whereas if you did like digest size, sold it in the supermarket, um, I think it had to would have a better chance of selling. Do they still make that comic? I don't think so. Anytime they do those kind of things, they'll do it as like a one shot limited like throwback thing. It's a new it'll be new something, but they did that for uh I think Kelly Thompson wrote like a five issue like Black Widow and uh Winter Soldier, um or maybe a Hawkeye and uh Winter Soldier like five issue like tales from suspense and then that was it so i think it was just them just being like oh it'd be cool people will like it and it was mm -hmm. new stuff but i think that's the only time they they don't do it for like a long time commitment they'll just do it for like a story arc just for a i don't know boo ah you scared me so the vest that i was working on for dr teeth when i really looked at it there was some stuff that I drew in the pencils where I'm just like, wait, why did I do it that way? And now I'm going through and redoing it. So I'm going to soon reveal a vest that I'm much more satisfied with. But yeah, it, it just was not clicking with me. And then I, uh, and then all of a sudden it just hit and I zoomed out and I looked at it. And I'm like, well, I know why. This looks weird. And now, I think I'm ready to share it. Okay. All right, so this is where I'm kind of sitting. There's going to be one thing I'm going to get rid of this. But... When I did his vest, I did what I'll show the example here. Mm -hmm. I did it. I just did it like this, and then was gonna you know, almost like a Christmas tree, and then I was just gonna design tassels like so. But right. when I actually started doing the details, I did all that on the sketch card. But when I wanted mm -hmm. to do it this way digitally, then I'm just like, wait a minute. I got to get rid of those. It's still got the Christmas tree shape, but I got to get rid of the of the smooth arc lines and make them all squiggly. So I just kind of have a wild is I'm assuming he's just going nuts on the piano. So then his vest is kind of, you know, mm. just going wild, too. But but yeah, so I'm, I'm much more uh, happy with. Uh... You're almost done. Yeah, and what I want to do, uh, now you'll notice I didn't do the top of the hat because what I wanted to do is get all of the pencils in order, which I think are done, because mm -hmm. in with digital, I'm like, I want to just make that top hat uh, longer and crazier. Mm -hmm. and I was going to run out of room, but I don't want to resize it until I knew I had everything else uh, the way it needs to be. So I'm going to do this here, and uh, let me turn off this guy. So yeah, I wanted to uh let me just get back to where I need to be here. But yeah, now that I have a lot more room, I wanted to uh Yeah, hold on here. I'm going to go back. Okay, that's what I wanted. All right. How's it going over there, Troy? Good, good. I'm just watching you. My uh, my ink is still too wet. And I've drawn myself into far too many corners to continue to try on that one. So I'm just going to grab a Sharpie marker. You know, I was going to draw a base foundation, but now I'm not. 
what am I drawing now? Um, now, this is an interesting moment where I'm like, I want to draw this hat. And the first kind of person who I knew know who would crush this kind of hat is uh, Mr. Scotty Young. Scotty Young would draw the heck out of the top of this top hat here. Mm -hmm. Just with like how it all like, you know, scrunches up and hangs over and everything. But I just have to be like, how do I, I know how Scotty Young does it, but how do I do it? Or, oh, actually, or do I do this first? Do I do this top first? That's probably what I do, right? Or I, I do. Um, I think I, uh, I think I'm supposed to draw this part first, position it where I want it, and then kind of go down like that and draw from there. I think that's what I'm, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking there. And for any of those watching, um, I, I keep thinking about, you know, letting people in on how I do things. They might just be like, why are you doing it that way? You should, you know, it's a lot simpler to do. There's things that I've learned in the last six months that where I, I just kind of keep getting, you know, I just kind of figure it out or I keep watching like Art and Franco stuff. But um, mm -hmm. there we go. I think I'm satisfied with, I think that looks how I, Want it to look? I like it. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of make that taller than what uh, what it actually is on the uh, as I bring up the sketch card again. That's what I did with the actual yeah. sketch card, but digitally, I'm just like, I want to go crazier with that hat. Yeah, for some reason in my mind, he had like a stripe hat. That's probably cat in the hat I'm thinking about. Yeah, and, and I'm no cat actually. In the hat. Yeah, I'm putting in one little one little stripe, whatever that's called, where I can tuck the feather into. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, uh, cat in the hat would definitely have the, the multiple stripes going on, and and now normally when I draw like this, it's me watching YouTube on the TV, and it's watching uh whether it's the official original drink and draw with uh, um, Jeff Johnson, Joe Casada, Dave Johnson. I've not uh, heard of this. What's that? So yeah, that is, it's an awesome one. They haven't done episodes in quite a while. Um, I'm just going to bring it up on YouTube as we, uh, as people focus on whatever's happening on your side of the screen. I'm just noodling around. So the original drink and draw social club, and that is the uh, the YouTube page. And the guys that I mentioned hang out and draw, and much like what we do with having a theme topic, which I'm sure a lot of people do. Um, and then they'll bring in guests, you know, their friends and stuff and blah, blah, blah. They started doing some spinoff episodes when they couldn't get all the guys there, which is kind of what we're doing with Dynamic 2 and and the Three for Alls. And they would have another round with Jeff Johnson and he would kind of host the show and they would deep dive into like specific like issues and pages and just gush over the art and and uh, but yeah, it's very there's a lot of content on there. They have 166 videos. Uh, it's very fun. The original Drink and Draw Social Club. So I'll watch that stuff. I'll watch Ryan Stegman's uh, Stegman and His Amazing Friends. You know, Art Balthazar's Famous Cartoonist Draws Things episodes. All the All Yeah Comics episodes. Um, basically anything where people just are drawing. And mm -hmm. it's that's usually my inspirational background noise when I do this stuff. Mm -hmm. 
And it's almost kind of like what we're doing now because you are drawing when I'm just sitting here drawing. So, mm -hmm. but then there's the realization where I'm just like, oh, wait, I have to say stuff too. I, uh, I read, wish I knew where it was. Um, but joke, it was a Joe Casada interview. Maybe I saw it. Maybe I didn't read it. Either way, he was talking about doing like a book that had his uh, his more authentic drawing style okay. apparently what he draws on uh, comics is not typically like typically what he considers to be him you know sure and uh, i would love to see that yeah he's he's awesome and now like he had recently just left uh, marvel after uh, a long long run and you know, editor in chief and creative officers and all these different titles, worked with Marvel Studios and Marvel Television and you know, doing covers and stories and just doing a whole bunch of stuff. And now within this past year, he's kinda he's got stuff that he's kind of waiting to talk about. I think he's been doing some Batman covers. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I think I think he's probably entering a very exciting uh chapter in his life where he, you know, can kind of focus on his own stuff again and mm -hmm. still wet that's the one thing that i will say about fountain pens is that if you have a bit of a heavy hand like i do it will be wet for a long time mm -hmm. let's see Okay, I just have to draw this feather and then I think I'm, uh, let me go back to a share screen for this moment and then I think I'm ready to color. Okay. So yeah, this is where I'm sitting before I, uh, I, I have to. I keep looking for my like reference on Google, but being like, I have my sketch card right here. And uh, I like how the hat is sort of looks like it's wobbling. Yeah, that's what I was really trying. That's why I wanted to make it longer. And I was just really trying to think of that. And once I realized I had to uh, draw the, you know, the, the oval on the top and then draw the lines down from there, that then it clicked. Looks good. Thank you. And then let's see. Feather time. I think I can do a better taper. Uh, we, we'll never know how long certain episodes will go, whether it's our featured episodes, whether it's the dynamic duos or the three for alls. And it just kind of gets to a point where, you know, if someone's like, all right, well, I got to get start wrapping it up. Then we're like, all right, let's wrap it up. Um, so I think we'll do a lot of learning here as we go along. Uh -huh. I think that's and everything else I do with the feather, I think would just be in colors. All right, I'm just staring at it and I think I'm gonna go ahead. Now, drop colors. That's something that I still am not too comfortable with doing i like doing all just kind of like the hand coloring on a different layer just in so i have the freedom to change some stuff around mm -hmm. for the right orange for his nose and hair but i guess i might just see how it looks maybe i just have to get to the point being like oh i can just always do drop colors there and come in a little more 
the beauty of the uh, digital art is that if you don't like what you do, you can always undo it. Yeah. All right. I think that's a, that's a good orange. Oh boy. Now, what do you think when I just did the, these purples here and when I do that top, should that be darker purple on the top or a lighter purple? Darker? Assuming that the light is coming from up top, the light, it would be lighter. Okay. So that's one thing. And I've talked about this a couple times where like, I, I'm not one that does like shadows and this and light sources and stuff. Just, I'm just not at that stage, but uh, right. so I never like really think about it, but I figure we're here in the moment ask your advice and see what you thought and i went with it what do you think about it? you could always try it darker and and see like on a separate layer i think it looks great then i'm gonna start looking for his uh what i'll call the uh, puppet skin that should be the right term for it right puppet skin I don't know. It sounds foul. <clears throat> Speaking of puppet skin, um, there is something here that I'm hoping to read. I'm, if it's good, I'll talk about it on the Crimson Gull Comic Club. I'm going to reach for it here in just a second. But as a professional, I just do the stop video so you don't have to see me awkwardly try to get up by the chair and see that I'm wearing some Iron Man shorts. <laughs> I feel very called out as the guy that shows his feet whenever he switches camera. Very first episode is just get to know Troy. <laughs> so yeah, there is uh what I'm going to well it is a rated teen book, but um I got this one here. It came out the week that we're recording. It's called mm. Car the Cartoon Puppet Horror Theater. And this mm. is from American Mythology Productions. And this is the cover here. Okay. Well, that's definitely very... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is a teen-rated book, so I think it should be fairly safe what I'm about to show. But when I flip through... Now, you're going to like this. It's got newsprint-type paper on the inside. Nice. So let's just take a look at this first page here. And, uh, I mean, you can just kind of see some of the color tones and stuff like that. But, yeah, it's... Mm -hmm. uh, when I opened it up that way, I was just like, oh, yeah, I think I'm going to like this. And uh, I haven't read it yet. If I do like it, you'll hear me talk about it on episode 264, I think, of the Crimson Call Comic Club podcast. Mm -hmm. If I didn't think much about it and I didn't have much to say about it, I'll talk about one of the other, you know, 80 comics that are waiting for me to read here. What's your pull list like? Uh, is it really like yeah yes I, so pull list an anthony pull list uh there was one moment at crimson cowl comics and collectibles which was uh where the comic club came out of i'm looking right. for my stylus just found it um that uh there was one moment maybe in like 2017, 2018. Mm -hmm. And my weekly pull list, uh, David and Kurt over at the shop would uh, get my books all you know set aside for me. I would come in just to double check, make sure everything's all looking good. And uh, I counted through the books. And that week, I think I had so like 42 new issues or 38 new issues. Or, and that's the moment when I stopped and being like, okay, this is ridiculous. So I was mostly used to getting anywhere from like 20 to 25, and then it started getting to 25 to 30, and then it kind of stayed at that. And that's all brand new weekly stuff. That wasn't me going to the rack and uh, 
just being like, hey, uh, this looks neat. This is all stuff that I committed to already. And right. uh, um, and once I hit that, I think it was 42. Once I hit that, that's when I'm just like, all right, I got to make some, make some cuts here. But I would read everything that week. Mm -hmm. Going into every new week, I wouldn't ever be like, oh, I got 10 more issues to go. I just, that's just what I did. Yeah. Now, though, it's, uh, it varies. Um, I would say it probably is within like a healthy 15 to 20. Mm -hmm. That's but, still quite a bit. Yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, I think I'm entering a stage where I want to, uh, where I don't need to catch up on everything Marvel related and just kind of concentrate on more independent stuff at this moment. Mm -hmm. Mostly because I know it's just, uh, you know, things that'll take either their shorter runs or they have, uh, you know, breaks in between trades and, you know, whereas you're reading Spider-Man, well, Spider-Man's a bad example because I'll pretty much always get Spider-Man, but, uh, Spider-Man's never going to miss a month, you know, so. Right. But if I read something like, you know, Saga is awesome. Just be like, well, I know that I could read five or six sagas monthly, and then they're going to take, you know, two to three months off. And it just kind of a, gives a nice little break here and there. And then I'm just ready to jump back into it. Mm -hmm. I think I answered your question. I think you did. Uh, but yeah, doing the Crimson Cowl Comic Club, doing our Hellboy spinoff, which is on the Crimson Cowl Comic Club YouTube, where we go through the deluxe library editions. There's one episode out now at the time of this recording. I think we have maybe four of them banked. I have to mm -hmm. get back on that. And then doing Cartoonist by Night. All of this stuff is very fun stuff, but... Mm -hmm. Oh, and then releasing my art print and doing all that stuff and drawing for fun and sketch cards and day job and eating meals and <laughs> life stuff. I started mm -hmm. to realize, oh, these uh, weekly comics are uh, piling up a little quicker than I would like. So now it's all about balance. I don't have a local yep. comic shop. In fact, the closest shop to me um, is 45 minutes. And I wouldn't say it's a real great shop. No. Um, they, uh, they're very nice, but as far as what they have, you know, they're Kind of limited. Yeah. Yeah, for the longest time, you know, closest one for me, usually like a half hour drive at the least and get to more selection as you get into 45 minutes away and such. And then, then Crimson Cowl popped up in the next town over and my life was perfect. And then, uh, and then a shop opened up uh, extremely close to me. And then it's just like, all right, we have all these choices. And then some other ones pop up, some other ones go away. But it's always just a, uh, you never know how long they're going to last. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But the local one here is uh, doing pretty well. And All right, so I'm going through and I'm coloring some sleeves here, just doing some quick drops as we go through. And I, when I do it on the iPad here, and I got to reach for the corner, sometimes I keep bringing down my uh, my iPad. Whoops, my iPad uh, menu or my. You'll see that from time to time. Mm -hmm. But right now, I still feel like I'm in a race just because I'm talking and recording and people should be entertained. <laughs> like, are you not entertained? 
Like that's my brain is just currently in that mode where I'm like, if I'm recording something, uh, it isn't normal for me to have the dead air, which it works great for a drawing show just because we're drawing and we're watching all of it happen. And mm -hmm. but my brain okay. has to uh, remember which show I'm doing right now. Right. When you have dead air, you could always fill it in with some of Matt's music. Rogers, <clears throat> speed speed the drawing up and do some some Rogers music. I really don't know what to draw. I am I am tapped out. Now there's. One thing that I am going to experiment with that if Rogers was here, I know he would have the answer because I think he recently was doing it for his uh, Happy Astronaut. Uh... Okay, so I just kind of wanted to get that in place. There was something he did in settings. Noise? Is that what he talked about? Where he added noise? There we go. So look. I'm going to yeah. zoom that's so when I cool. when I knew it, when I added noise, it makes it look like the puppet skin, as I was talking about. So, so here's what I was doing for those watching, and I went to this uh, noise option, and I can just rub my finger across the screen to increase how much noise, and this is like the full noise, which is not what I want. Mm -hmm. But then I just go back here. All right, we're bringing it down. We're bringing it down. I think this might be a... I think that might be a, a happy... I don't know what I'm saying. All right. Let's talk about what's happening on your side there. What, what's going on now? I'm just doodling until you're done. Wasting paper, really. <laughs> so I want to see the finished. I wonder, could you do that noise just on certain sections of it? Yeah, because I was looking at the... Uh... Because I would definitely want, you know, the puppet skin and the nose to be noisy. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, like, my inking lines, when I when I tone down the noise, it, it looked better. But when I increase it, then you start seeing the, like, I wouldn't want the outlines to be noisy. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just kind of want to do a test there to see what that... Uh... This is the first time doing noise. Okay, so I'm back to where I'm at there. So I wonder if it's something where I can do the, uh, like the lasso. We'll do it on a separate layer. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just finish what I'm doing before I mess around with that, but, uh, that's something that I'll learn and I'll uh, ask Rogers about too. So yeah, even though I'm looking at my trading card, I'm going to uh, look at a Google image quick and see what's happening. Since I'm drawing Dr. Teeth, I should mention I've watched two episodes of The Electric Mayhem. It is a show exclusively for Disney+. Plus. There are 10 episodes available uh, that were dropped right away. And uh, the show very hilariously follows the fact that Doc Dr. Teeth and Electric Mayhem, they're talking about their epic 40-year tour. They've been doing this for 40 years. They're constantly on tour. 
you know, going all over the world and, you know, rocking out. And then they realize that uh, they have yet to release their first album. <laughs> After and, 40 years. Yes. And, and that's where the concept of the show goes, where there's this company, this record company that is about to be shut down. And they realize that, like, we're going to need a big win here. And there's this young woman, uh, Lily Singh, I believe, is place her she was uh i think she had a talk show for a little bit i don't know if she was a i don't know enough about her but she's the lead and uh she goes through some files and realizes like oh they signed a an album deal with uh, electric mayhem back in uh you know 40 years ago but they never released anything and this might be the opportunity to uh to go ahead and uh book them and uh and so she tracks them down and uh wants to get them together to do a record and so far it's followed focused on the band i haven't seen i don't know if any cameos happen from kermit and piggy and fozzy and all them you know mm -hmm. i remember seeing the trailer once or twice i don't remember if any of the characters popped up in there but there's a lot of cool guest stars that will eventually be showing up on the show and uh Weird Al is going to be on an episode. <laughs> so my when I saw the image, I'm just like, holy crap. I'm like, all right, Weird Al and the Muppets on a show together. This is like, I didn't even ask for that. And somebody is making my dreams come true. Nice. And then Kevin Smith is in an episode. So when you're looking at, you know, film directors and such like that, just like, oh, there's another awesome uh you know, personality that I love. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the first two episodes are really fun. They do a couple, they have some cover songs in there. I actually just bought the uh, the vinyl um, online. So their first album, which is the soundtrack to the TV series. Um, so I got this like cool, like purple, like translucent vinyl, I think. Um, so I've got that all uh, on order and shipping out to me. Isn't but, it wild that it's easier to find vinyls than CDs at this point? Yes, because I don't think there is a CD. I think you can get the Electric Mayhem one digitally. And I was trying to find the CD and I just could not find it anywhere. And I'm just like, well, I guess I'm getting a vinyl. Speaking of vinyl, since I'm not on my share screen right now and my vinyls are right next to me, I don't know enough about vinyls. I've had some over the years, and uh, I think two years ago I bought just a relatively inexpensive one. And uh, But I'm going to show this off, a little show and tell. This is what's great about the Dynamic 2.0s or the 3 for alls is that we can do anything we want. Yes, we can. I have We're finally probably... free from those two mats. Exactly. The mats are you know matting us down, if you will. We feel like we're underneath the mats. I, we, want, we want to stomp over the mats. We want to wipe our feet of the mats. Um, so here we go. I have a Howard the Duck vinyl. Nice. Which is great because this is one that it's hard to get the songs. Um, and Cherry Bomb, which is uh, Leah Thompson's band in there, uh, you know, Beverly's band. So this has everything. So it has the Cherry Bomb songs. This is, I love, this is so great. My buddy Piers likes that movie. I'm not sure. I don't remember if I've ever seen it all the way through. Is that right? Yeah. The um, I mean, I know you're a big fan and everything, but yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it sort of famously bad? Yeah. So, I'll I'll say this: when I was watching that movie at roughly what age four or five, mm -hmm. I'm looking at this being like, there's a talking duck. I'm already a fan of Sesame Street and Muppets and related stuff. So now there's a talking duck mm -hmm. and he's in a duck world and he's, you know, he's in his recliner, gets, you know, shot down to earth, lands in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then there's humans and rock and roll and adventures and stuff like that. So as a kid, to me, this is one of the greatest movies ever. Mm -hmm. As I would grow older and continue to watch it. 
I would understand being like, well, this ain't the best movie ever, but I I still absolutely love it because it's a movie that was made and and mm. I'm very accepting of the you know the time that was made and right the bold swing, um, but it is mostly known as people are just like, oh, that movie's bad. But, you know, there are people are like, well, I still love it because it's a childhood. Like, if someone hasn't seen it that is an adult now, I have no idea how they would react to that kind of movie, you know? Yeah. But nostalgia Factor plays heavy. Really, really heavy for me for watching things. Um, like, you had, you had shared the uh, Dennis the Menace, something Dennis the Menace in the private chat. Yep. And, like, the nostalgia factor just looking at that I was like whoa made me want to go and find some Hank Ketchum Dennis the Menace books or something to start reading up on it because I remember absolutely loving it I don't remember anything about it but I'm sure that if I saw it again the cartoon again that I would uh, I'd be very into it even if it was awful I feel like I'd be very into it just because I used to watch it before school as a kid yeah, it's uh. Why it's... you put the screen on me, Anthony? You... I, I hear you. Because you mentioned uh, Hank Ketchum, so I wanted to show this off. Oh, nice! It's a thick book in square format, and it's all uh, roughly the daily comic strips. So each page is just a one singular, you know, like a family circus type of thing. But Dennis the Menace, obviously. Yeah. And this like is the original ones. This is the complete. It says nineteen fifty one to fifty two, and it says complete. I don't know if that means the complete for this year, or if this is all they. I I don't know enough how long this stuff lasted. That's probably just the dailies for those two years, so seven hundred some. So yeah. Um... But yeah, this is, uh, yeah, they say this is the inaugural volume in a series collecting. Yep. So Dennis the Menace, the cartoon, the Dairy Queen advertisements, and yeah, I can taste those hot dogs right now just by uh, thinking about them. And uh, they would just always have the Dennis the Menace characters um, all over the store and the the bags mm -hmm. and the, you know, the wrappers and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, the movie that was speaking of Leah Thompson, she was Mrs. Mitchell in there. Um, okay. and Christopher Lloyd is like the he's the like he's the, the hobo, yeah, yeah, he's the hobo, you know, villain guy throughout the movie. I um, was about to say, I'm not sure I've seen that movie, and then you said Christopher Lloyd, I'm like, oh, great. And Walter, uh, Walter, Matthau, Walter Matthau is Mr. Wilson, and then there's the scene with the chicklets and his yep, teeth. Yep. Yeah, I need to go see that one. That yeah. see that one again. I watched that a couple years ago, and I I had a lot of fun with it. And but that oh, was, nice. I want to say that was like ninety three maybe, and I thought that was really darn good. So yeah, Walter Matthau passed away, didn't he? Yeah, I think it's I think was a handful it? of years now. It's been a while. I think so. But yeah, yeah he, like he is. Yeah. I like him in almost everything I've seen him in. I've liked him. He's he's a good character. Yeah, Yagums to Walter Matthau. Yagums. <laughs> I've got the Batman Returns vinyl. Nice. Is my hat on street? Uh, yeah. What do you think about the hair? Huh? Well, as someone who has no hair, I, 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 I like it because I don't have that up there. <laughs> um steve miller band well I, I like them they got some good tunes so this is i think their yeah. greatest hits album is really great so i figured hence the greatest hits um yeah. wow what a statement i think their greatest hits album is really great i mean some may even call them hits yeah <laughs> um speaking of greatest hits uh television's greatest hits volume two this was gifted to me by a uh, customer friend, Jim. Um, uh -huh. He's a big vinyl guy, and uh, he's possibly watching the show. So this is at my side here, and this has uh, the Three Stooges. It's got Rocky and Bullwinkle, Pink Panther, Roadrunner, George of the Jungle. 
Speaking of some jungle, Spider Man's on here. The Pe- original. Yeah, yeah. The Peanuts theme is on here. The Odd Couple. We've got Bewitched. We got the Brady Bunch, the Partridge Family. Jeopardy. The Jeopardy theme is on here. Hogan's Heroes. Mm-hmm. I see nothing. I'd say the Jeopardy's theme song is definitely a greatest of all all TV theme songs. We should get the rights for that and have that just playing constantly during these episodes. Or, you know, maybe not pay a million dollars. I bet that's expensive. They're still making it. I thought that when Alex Trebek passed away that they would stop. Uh, But apparently a person at work is a fan of the show. And they're still Uh, doing it. It's one of the... um, one of those people that won it a million times. Yeah, and then isn't uh, Mayim Bialik doing some episodes? Um, Blossom? I think she's Could doing be. some version of it too, but... Could be. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Once More of a Feeling, the musical episode. This is a, a beloved, treasured um, vinyl, but this soundtrack of this episode, and look at this fold out here. That's pretty cool. I've never seen that episode, but it's like a theme. You mentioned things and I'm like, I've never seen. I'm season, sorry. Season six, episode seven. Not that I'm counting. <laughs> and hopefully I don't have to edit that. I think that's right. Um, Weird Al's debut album. I got the vinyl of that one. It's cool. And even though it's May right now, but uh, would you be in the mood for some exciting Christmas stories um, with Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman? I would. I very much would. That's pretty cool. I like the artwork on the back. I'm a fan of the Tell Him Steve Dave podcast. Uh, The guys from Comic Book Men and friends of uh, Kevin Smith, including Brian Quinn from Impractical Jokers. So I have Uh their vinyl cast album, which is podcast on a vinyl, which is just great. That's pretty funny. I'm probably the only person that bought this, uh, but I have the Yoga Hoser soundtrack on uh, awesome pink vinyl. Yeah, you probably are the only one, but hold on to it. It'll be rare one day. This has the, the hockey song, which is performed by the Glam Skanks, and it's got the cover of Babe uh, by Lily Rose Depp and Harley Quinn Smith. O Canada, they sing O Canada in here. I've got a Superman. Um, I assume this is like the book on tape type of thing. Okay. You I say you that. assume. Have you not listened it? Listen to it? It's these have been I, I forget where some of these stuff came from if I always had these or if they're gifted through other hand me down collections. But uh-huh. I don't know if I've listened to these since I've gotten the uh my own my own uh record player. Mm-hmm. That's what I need to have when I'm drawing. But this uh, Spider-Man one has some comics on the inside, too. Cool. Here's the book book and record set of a Superman one. Okay. Now I'm very curious what they are. And apparently I have uh, Carol King. Okay then. Let's let's, let's, the let's one do out. this for the uh, the video here. Um, so if we look over here, look at this shirt that I got. Um, let me look up at it. Um, I think the proportions are they good? They good right here. Perfect. Actually, you know, I don't know what you did with your hair, but you look better now. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, and those are the ones that are just accessible. But I said all of that because I just ordered the Electric Mayhem soundtrack very cool all right so where are we sitting with this episode how you feeling over there i'm pretty much done last couple things that i drew was just kind of not feeling it drawing but i can show counting counting down did a a a brush pen doodle this brush pen either is not made for quick drawing because everything comes up dry brushed 
nothing is solid. So it's either intended for painting very, very slow or maybe different paper. It could be the paper that I'm using. Uh, this paper is, um, it's actually watercolor paper. So one side of it is um, watercolor paper, highly textured. It's super cheap from Walmart watercolor paper. Um, but the back of it works great for regular markers and pens. It's a smooth back and a textured front. So that's why I get it. And when I go to conventions, I will do like uh, quick sketches for 20 bucks. So I did the Joker quick sketch. I did several quick sketches, but this is the one that I'm happy with. And with the um, fountain pen that I found, I did sort of a, a noodling jungle girl sketch. And that's a character from Jungle Drama coming soon from Keen Spot, written by me with uh, Danny Harrell and uh, Eric Marshall on art. And uh, that's all I got. Are you done with yours to share? So what I'm doing while you were talking, I'm just doing some really like random uh, to fill out the piano. I'll do this properly on my own time. But for the sake of the ending of this video here, and I actually do, I'll, I'll redo it, but I think I might keep how crazy I'm making these keyboard keys right now. Um, it just looks like I made a cityscape out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go ahead and color these in just to kind of give an idea of, of where I'm going. But I'm going to redo all of that and uh, we'll eventually post it alongside the episode. Cool. But um, overall, though, while talking and hanging out, I think it went pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, I had fun. I'm not sure how, you know, how it is to watch. You know, is it is it entertaining or is it just us enjoying hanging out and doodling? And I think with, and I think with, question. yeah, and I think with these kind of episodes, um, you know, once again, encouraging people to, uh, to chime in and uh draw along and i think that's where it just it makes you feel like you're like when i do that with like i'll rewatch art Beltazar's uh drawing videos he's got you know like 150 mm -hmm. plus if not more you know well that's mm -hmm. what the plus is for um and uh and i'll just go back to the beginning and it's just like hearing him talking about stories it has you know gordy's music playing in the background and i'm mm -hmm. just drawing and it doesn't like there might be times I'm not even remembering to look up at the screen, but, but you know, it yeah. does feel good when you're just, it feels like you're here. How about this? When I, I just saw art at the free comic book day um, and we were talking and he goes, he told us that told me that he watched, you know, our first episode of cartoonist by night, which is the Aya comics episode. And he mm -hmm. said that he was commenting along, but like, like out loud, like to himself, basically, you know, it wasn't like he was typing it out or anything like that, just because sure. like the conversation. So he was reacting to us. And I'm sure he was probably drawing and doing his thing and everything too. But, uh, you know, that's, that's how he was consuming it. So that's cool. And now I'm going to do, really cool. go ahead. That, no, I was just saying that's actually really cool. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, with him saying that, you know, it was almost if if he was in the chat, basically. That's mm -hmm. how he was reacting to it, even though it's a pre-recorded video and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at my drawings, and I actually prefer, and I find this a lot, I prefer my doodles. Like my, like this, the, the Joker. That Joker. I, I prefer that to something that I spend more time on. Is that odd? I wonder if that's common. I think you had a similar, I think that's how you mentioned it in that first episode when my friend Nikki asked the question. And uh, I think there was a sim similar uh, yeah. response. That yeah. You had. I do recall that. I don't know why. It seems like the more effort that goes into it, 
Um, okay, I'm ready to do a share screen. And once you have Procreate and you have all these different crazy brushes, I think when I explore those, it's totally going to help me just go nuts on his vest and uh, do all the stuff that Dr. Teeth is just wearing all the, you know, this, all this fuzzy stuff. And mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think I'm going to find a lot of good brushes that are basically meant for Dr. Teeth drawings only. Okay. Like, I should just call them Dr. Teeth brushes and Procreate should just rename them like that. So I'm going to show it very soon. Once again, I did a very quick, uh, version just to kind of show what it, the end might possibly look like okay i like the keys like that yeah so i i just quickly did that just to be like i you know just to get it done but i, I think i'm going to do redo it but do something similar in the where mm -hmm. it just looks like the you know the background of oh yeah comic cityscape you know or what you pull off with your slanted you know any cartoonist buildings basically you know yeah i dig it and then once I found the, you know, the little uh, sword glass tool and all of these other brushes that are available here where I'm just like, I think there's going to be a lot of crazy things I can do to really uh, finish. I, none of that yeah. stuff looks familiar to me. And I have Procreate. And none of that looks familiar. Yeah, there's they're all under the organic ones. And there's just so many different crazy things. And Huh, neat. But yeah, I think a lot of this organic stuff, I don't know what this one's going to look like, but I just wanted to do a test. Yeah, so mm -hmm. this one here. But I think I'll be able to do a lot of a lot of stuff with that once I actually get in there. But yeah, this is where I'm going to leave it for this episode. So Cool. If there's like a smoke, you can have like smoke coming off the keyboard. Well, all right. Getting down. <laughs> oh, look at that. Right in front of you. <laughs> well. Well, yeah, I... That's, that's a bit much. <laughs> play around with, yeah. I'm still on blue here. So just ah. yeah. This is where I'm really gonna have fun playing around with those settings. So I'm gonna leave it right there. Let me uh, end that. I think that's going to do it for this episode so yeah this is going to be the first dynamic tool which might be our second episode even though we have several others banked um mm -hmm. and all that we really need to ask people is uh, if you like this you know feel free to give it an actual like subscribe mm -hmm. to the channel uh share the post and let people know and uh comment along and offer suggestions email us cartoonistbynight at gmail.com if you have any mm -hmm. questions or comments or concerns suggestions Okay. And uh, we had kind of toyed with the idea of doing some tutorials. So if somebody has uh, I, something that they'd like to see a tutorial of, um, it won't be um, it won't be great, but it'll be how I do it. So if you want to see how I do a specific topic, uh, you can email Anthony at cartoonistbynight at gmail.com or uh, leave a comment. What is, this is on uh, Facebook? Or this YouTube? is YouTube. YouTube. Okay, leave a comment in the YouTube comments. And uh, you leave a YouTube comment in the YouTube comments here on YouTube. And how do you get to YouTube? Is that YouTube? Doc, you have www. Just, just got to Google the YouTubes for yeah. the YouTubes. And YouTube will pop up. I don't know. I feel like an old man sometimes when I talk about these things. Even though you said the Facebook thing, I mean, people will see this, you know, it'll be posted on Facebook, but as a YouTube link. So they can still comment under the Facebook post, you know, so you're not. So it's on, it's on the Facebooks as well. Yeah, yeah. Is it going to be on the Instagram? It'll be on the Instagram page, which is uh, the term of do it for the gram. We're going to do this show for the gram. So Nice. My daughter loves it when I call it the instant gram. <laughs> she loves it. Instant gramification. Yes. All right, man. This was fun. I hope it uh, turns out well. If not, you just edit me out of it and it'll be great. Yeah, it'll just be me talking and showing off my vinyl record collection for some reason. So, but yeah, that's what these episodes are for. They're pretty fun. All of the links will be in the credits and uh, that's how to follow us and all that stuff. So, 
Cool. All right. I'll talk to you later, bud. See you later. From the ashes of the greatest comic book store in the universe, these comic book fan friends band together to review new comics, graphic novels, collected editions, and the occasional back issue. Led by host Anthony Latch, together they form the Crimson Cowl Comic Club Podcast.